Welcome back to another episode of Senjin.io. Fortunately, the drone activity is light, so we can keep reading email. We got some new parts, logic gates. We got a not and or XOR. Ah, uh, the logic company. What a good name. It's my favorite company that makes logic. Once again, so traffic signal. Once again, we are set to contribute a piece of the larger system for the company contro controlled by Sun Hayoshin. This is, this is a traffic signal for a six-way intersection with support for emergency transponders that override the normal traffic pattern. I don't know any more than this. Okay, sounds like super fun. <laughs> emergency is a simple input connected to a device that detects the transponders of nearby emergency vehicles. Light zero, one, and two are simple outputs connected to a go, no go traffic signal for three different, for three different directions at a hexagonal intersection. Control of the lights should be sequenced as indicated in the verification tab, turning off all lights when an emergency vehicle is detected and restarting the sequence when it leaves the transponder range. The durations of the phases are set by the operator using switches that can be read as XBUS inputs. Super fun, super complicated. They can't just give me an easy four-way one. All right, so there's an emergency dude. It goes high sometimes, and then when it goes high, everybody turns off. And it looks like it resets the pattern. So light, light zero is controlled by phase zero, which is how long this is. And then this is phase one. Why is that only two? Oh, be two it's two because the emergency turned on. Normally it's four. So right here we see four and then we see two. And then it repeats. All right, let's see how we read this stuff. So are these X buses or pens? Okay, they're X buses. The pin, yep. Let's move all this stuff way over here. Just for fun. In case we need a zillion. Control units, which is unlikely, but hopefully, you never know. Right, so, I'll put this over here close to it. Well, I'm sure somebody solved it with just doing this. Whether I can do the same, I don't know. Let's see, let's uh, move X0 into ACC and sleep for one and see what that does. It should give me a five. And I think these are non-blocking because I should be able to just read them constantly. Yep, okay. No problem. So it's kind of hard to kind of use it's hard to use a gen command on these things, even though it looks kind of like a gen. But the, ignoring the ambulance light, it's supposed to be um, maybe something like move one zero zero to x three, maybe, and then sleep for x zero and then move 10 to X3, and sleep for X1, and then move one into X3, and sleep for X2, and then just repeat this thing. And then we'll, we'll add a test. Test if P0 is equal to zero. If it's not, we'll jump to 
sleep for now. Sleep. And then we'll jump to the start. Just ignore the ambulance. All right, so light zero's on, which is good. Sleeping for the right amount of time. actually working. That section is actually working correctly. Look at that. The power of assembly instructions. So all I need to do is reset based on this P0 dude. And it could happen at any time, which is the real tricky part. Because these sleep commands suck. Because they are, can't be interrupted. And that's where we get into this complex crazy logic. But I wonder that we could do something like this, where we don't feed it directly to this guy. We feed it to a like an emergency processor, dude, and then he feeds out what really should happen. By default, he's going to move X zero into X one and sleep. But he's also got a pin that he's listening for the emergency pin, and then. weird thing is how to restart this thing. I don't know if I can restart it easily because I need to restart as soon as it leaves, no matter where it was. And I think that's the real thing. I don't know if I can write this logic this way because even because when this goes low, I, I could send a signal to this guy, you know, somehow. But this guy might be in the middle of a long sleep, like right here, which he's kind of in, right? You know, he's, he's supposed to go He's supposed to go to four units right here. He's in two. So right in this line, he's sleeping for four. And I need to tell him to stop doing that. And then as soon as this guy's done, I need to reset him back to here. So after every one of these sleeps, I need to like wake back up. Um, I need to bust apart each of these sleeps. So I really need like an interruptible sleep command. which I think is the tricky part. That can be done with another processor, but I'm kind of running out of buses. You know, this guy could go and say, test if P0 is if he is, then move 0 into x1, otherwise move x1. Yeah, so you can go and do this. Yeah, I think what I want to do is tell it, you're at this state and you want to sleep for this much, but it's interruptible. And then just tell this guy to process that. So let's make this guy bigger. And he 
needs to move over a bit. Alright, so he's not just going to get a zero. He's, what he's going to do is... is ready. Maybe. I don't know. And then test if X3 is zero. If it is, we'll jump to one. This is kind of what we want to do on every one of them. I think we'll run out of instructions though. I'm moving the command. This is the state of the light. This is how long to sleep for. And then waiting for this guy to up to the job. And then once he comes back with a zero, if he comes back with a zero, I will jump back to the beginning because zero means the ambulance interrupted me, so I reset everything. This should work. I just need to do it a little bit more. And I'm running out of space as usual. I don't really need yeah, I don't really need to jump and do all that because this is the end anyways. I just need to wait for him to return. This might be enough because I don't need these two statements at the end because that's redundant because I'm gonna loop back anyway. That might work. And I don't think I need to be wired up to this thing because it doesn't matter. Alright, so this guy's processing. So What we have is move X0 into ACK, move X0 into DAT, something like that. And then once you've done that, now we're gonna loop. And every every frame of the loop, we're, we're always sleeping one and we're subtracting, let's see, I wanna reverse these ACK and then DAT. Okay, so. If, P0 becomes 100, we'll move 0, and then we'll jump to 1, and first we'll move 0 into X3, or X0, um, and 0 into X2. So we're telling, so if we get a 100, we're telling this guy with a zero, we're saying, hey, the ambulance interrupted us. He's going to jump back to the beginning. And then, that's what I mess up, but something like this. And then, uh, then he's gonna jump, then he's gonna jump back to the beginning to read from this guy's statements to reset himself. It's not just a matter of, we really wanted to wait. Yeah, I'll flush that later. And then if it's not, 
If ambulance is not zero, then we're moving not x0 into x2, but that. And then we're also counting down. We're subtracting one, and then we're testing if ack is zero. If it is, then we're moving one into x0 to tell this guy to send me the next command. It's something like that, but I think it's gonna have some bugs as per usual. So that's 100 and we're waiting for five. So that's good. And this guy's waiting to get response of did the ambulance come or not. All right, so the ambulance does not arrive. So we're moving the 100 into this guy, which is good. We're subtracting one and then testing if we're zero or not. So then we need to jump to two. Okay, that's good. And then we'll keep doing that over and over again. So we're at zero, so we're going to write one there and sleep. And this is only in minus um, negative something like that. Okay, now we're at four and 10. That's looking good. So I didn't wait in long enough. So there was a missing, the sleep was in the wrong spot. So let's see, I'm moving. Is because these are all these are all pluses. This and this plus will jump back to two, so I don't really need to conditional it. All right, so that one's good. So this might go one extra frame. Yeah, he does. And then we're good there. We're updating back to four and ten. We're good there. Okay, now the tricky part comes. Let's set a breakpoint right here. So now we're saying, yep, the ambulance has come. Let's move zero into X zero to tell it to reset. And we want to move zero in there. Now we're jumping to one, which isn't correct because I don't want to jump to one immediately. I actually want to test if P, when P zero goes low, then I want to jump. And that's actually when I want to write the zero to X zero too. So now I want to, now I want to sleep one test if p some run of commands here it's really annoying how to make all this fit. So I can reuse those two commands there.
This isn't going to work either. Test if it's zero. It is. Well, I could solve it more inefficiently. By throwing down another unit. Now I can say um, move X one, move one to an X one, move and select to X one. Talk to it, it'll sleep until X1's available because it knows. So X1 will get triggered. This dude, this guy will this guy will push on X0 when after P0 goes low. When it goes low, then I know to reset everything. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm testing if P0 is high. If it is, then I'll Test if P0 is low. And if it is, I'll move 1 to X0. And if it's not, let's see if it's not, then I'll jump to sleep. So okay, P0 is, P0 is 100, as expected. This guy should have pushed zero into this guy first. All right, so, no, not that. No, not that way. I need to move zero into X2. Okay, we wrote zero there. Sleeping like guy's ready. Now he's testing for P0 to go low. It's gone low. And we need to give this a label. And sleep one, jump one. Okay, now he's locked in this. Test loop right there. This guy's locked in this test loop. 
waiting for it to go low. It did. Okay, now that's resetting. Everything's resetting. All right, so this guy's waiting for an X3. three into null. Let's try that. There we go. No problem. That wasn't too bad. And let's see, I came kind of in the middle. High, a little higher on power usage. Definitely there's a way to solve it simpler, which I'm sure the internet will point me to. Um, ways to optimize design. I don't see any obvious way to optimize this. This is a pretty complicated instruction set. Um, you know, if we look back, and uh, let's see how much is this worth. This is worth like nine, and maybe this one's worth 12 or something. I don't know. It's hard to tell with these crazy units. Oh, I guess this one might be 6 right here. 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't know. So let's see. It's probably... See, if I'm at 14 and that's 14 right there, then 13, 12 maybe? 10? I don't know if there... It's probably not even one unit each. It looks somewhere around 9 or 10. So, 9 or 10 would be maybe three of these. We have to have this guy, I think, which is a $1 part. So maybe with three of these, maybe both of these guys would get smaller. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy instructions I had to do here just to read these different inputs. This might be a better way to design this system. So I don't spend a whole block trying to trying to control this one. I don't know. Let's check our email and see what happened. No yellow signal. Does that mean they're expecting Ruble cars only? I wonder when where they'd use this. We shouldn't speculate. It's our job to provide well-engineered solutions, not play detective with clients' overall plans. Uh-oh. They're taking over those robots. Okay, see you next time on Sinjin.io.